Welcome, everybody, for another edition today. So glad to have you. We are in the heart of New York City today, sitting down with a um, good friend of mine, Max McLean, who is really a gem and also a legend in the faith journeys of so many New Yorkers and as well as people around the world. Uh, welcome to the show today, Max. Thanks, Kenny. Good to be on. Um, so today, I just we wanted to get straight to it. I'm excited because I'm actually sitting in the offices here at Redeemer Presbyterian Church, and uh, your office is close by. But um, your tour and your latest production is uh, back home here in the Big Apple. Um, mm -hmm. And I just want to introduce you to a lot of people out there that just might not have had the chance to hear from you in your own voice of um, the Max McLean story, the where have you come from, um, where are you going, etc. So why don't you just spend a, a minute or two sharing a little bit about your journey and your ministry? Uh, yes, uh, my uh, I have I was I'm an adult convert to Christianity. Uh, my uh, journey to faith and my uh, uh, career as an actor are, are kind of parallel. Um, since I was not raised in the uh, evangelical communion, um, I didn't know that Christians weren't supposed to be actors. <laughs> so I, I, um, I, I uh, found that out a little bit later. But what, what was very, very interesting is, uh, is um, I understood the power of storytelling under uh, really experienced the power of uh, of theater in terms of of uh, uh, challenging people's uh, perceptions, uh, engaging their imagination, and uh, shortly thereafter, when I came to Christ, um, the idea of uh, using uh, the skills and techniques developed in theater and applying it to to uh, to um, uh, telling a message from the Christian worldview, uh, first the Bible and then uh, later on the works of C.S. Lewis, uh, that's become my life's work. You've produced some amazing productions to date, just one after another consistently um, in a serial manner. One of the things that is so appealing to me is just this love, that love affair that you have with C.S. Lewis. Can you share a little bit about what is that spark? What's the driver behind that? Um, and for people um, that are listening today, wherever they are in the, their faith journey, right? We have a spectrum of people who have just come to know Christ or might be questioning um, to people who have been discipling for many years. Um, what's the relevance of C.S. Lewis in that journey? Well, there's a couple of things. Because I was an adult convert, uh, I was trained... Uh, and I mean, there was I had a bit of a of a pessimistic worldview and uh, certainly was quite skeptical of of uh, supernatural claims. Right. Um, and uh, and so was Lewis. Uh, you know, Lewis was also an adult convert. Uh, he his conversion process began in his mid 20s and was concluded at about the age of 32 uh, in terms of his uh, specific uh uh, faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, and so he never forgot what it was like not to believe. And he knew how to write and to communicate. And so he would use his ability to, uh, to write and communicate to help people who are trying to understand the Christian faith, uh, engage the Christian faith to, to come in. And he did it so well that that was uh, that was what uh, immediately attracted me to him. The second thing that attracted me to him is he has a tremendous understanding of spiritual warfare. Hmm. Uh, screw tape, great divorce, and all his works. Uh, essentially, every one of his works is is a kind of retelling of his own conversion story and his resistance to coming to faith in Christ. Um, and and uh, the, the, the understanding after the fact of the uh, of, uh, powers and principalities uh, decidedly at work uh, against him knowing God and knowing Christ. Wow, that's uh, really compelling. I think um, of all the different productions, 
um, that you've done so far. This one, I'm scheduled to see it um, in, a, in a week or so in Manhattan. Um, I'm looking forward to this one in particular because of that mix uh, that you bring out in, in, in the story for The Reluctant Convert. So wh- why don't we talk specifically about the show. Give us, some de- give us the formal details first. It's in New York City. How long is it here for? How long is the show? Is about 80 or 90 minutes, I believe. Yeah, um, 80 Mm-hmm. And um, where, what, which theater? Just give us some of the details first, and then yeah, just the it's backdrop. A, it's uh, it's at the Acorn Theater, which is the largest theater in Theater Row, uh, which is a, a a block of six theaters. Yes. Uh, that uh, you know has anything from Naked Boys Dancing to uh, the Marvelous Wonderettes <laughs> to the most reluctant convert. (laughs) So it's a, it's got a broad spectrum of, of uh, offerings, which is certainly uh, what New York's about. Um, We, we uh, had our first performance on February 8th. We're scheduled to uh, run through April, at least to April and perhaps longer. You know, it's obviously depends on, on how well it does. Um, Everybody, loves a conversion story. Uh, uh, believers like it and unbelievers actually like it too because they, they want to know what is it that compels someone to become a quote unquote true believer to really commit because they just don't get it and they want to know why, right, they right, want to right. know how. So, and, and what's good about Lewis is that he has this extraordinary ability to articulate to the to the detail uh, in a way that is really compelling. So it's not, uh, I felt this, or, I mean, it, it certainly has that, uh, but his, his ability to write and his ability to, to draw extraordinary uh, visual as well as emotional pictures and intellectual pictures uh, make, kind of really draws you in. You, you, you join him in his resistance and and the kind of compelling nature that he you know he can't resist anymore yeah um very powerful i think the way you do it in fact i think this from what what my understanding i guess uh, i'll know more when i see it in person uh from my understanding is that the story that you're trying to tell this time around is one that's extremely difficult to pull off but i think uh you do it in such an eloquent way as usual um you know one of the things that I wonder uh, that I wonder if you get any feedback for is that have you ever even considered um, modernizing or Americanizing the language? Um, although I'm sure there's some aspect of it feels like sacrilege to do so. Um, well, if you're going to try, because I really try to uh, get into the shoes of Lewis and uh, in his language. Uh, now you do have to thin it out. There's no doubt about that because yes. uh, his language is very, very dense. But uh, so thinning it out. But it's very, very funny. It's very witty. Uh, the turn of the phrase is kind of shocking. Um, so uh, that's kind of the fun part. Um, and uh, uh, and he's such an egghead. I mean, you know, he'll <laughs> he'll talk about. Uh, he'll talk about, uh, you know, my work was mostly, uh, it was Homer, uh, mostly Latin and Greek, Homer first, oh, still relish the brightness and music of it. Then the two great boars, Cicero and Demosthenes could not be avoided, uh, followed by Lucretius, oh, the glory. I mean, you know, he just loves this stuff. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, he'll even have some sort of side little comments like still have no taste for Virgil. And, you know, it's funny because who talks like that? Um, he lives so much in his head uh, that uh, uh, that it's uh, it's very compelling to go on a journey where nothing gets by him. He assumes nothing. Um, and his friendships are very, very important to him. Uh, every book he reads, he devours. I mean, it's almost as if he... Uh, he could, you know, if you tell him what page uh, and say exactly. the same paragraph, <laughs> he could, he, you know, he could count what's there. Exactly. Uh, it's 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 almost too much, but it's 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 kind of thrilling to be in the presence of someone like that. You know, when as soon as I put on the glasses and put on the suit and kind of, uh, you know, I, I I wear a wig that makes me look like him. Uh, you know, my IQ goes up like seventy five to one hundred points. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love that. Love that. So his language is dense, and I think you've done a good sh- a job in the past productions that, that I've seen of thinning it out and actually making it accessible. Um, who is the actual target audience for the show? Is it, um, you know, there's obviously a, a, a good church audience that brings people like my um, local ministry, Covenant Fellowship Church in New Jersey, um, came out on the 9th of February, going back on the in March again. Um, are you tuning the show in particular for people who um, are familiar with C.S. Lewis's works or um, what about those new converts or people who aren't as familiar? Um, I'm I think my my goal uh, my target audience is a smart open-minded unbeliever uh, seeker um, that or it could be somebody like you who is looking for an opportunity to share your faith in a way that uh, is perhaps a little unusual yes. in a uh, in a uh, in a in a setting that uh, doesn't raise any eyebrows? You know, you, you can go to a theater uh, and sit back and enjoy the show and know that there's not going to be any kind of pressure uh, and just really engage the imagination. Um, but but it's targeted to someone who has thought deeply about this and perhaps just can't get to the other side yes. or or even maybe uh, rejects it, re- rejects what they know. Right, right. Um, and because, you know, that's where Lewis was. You know, he said, I had Christians placed and disposed of forever. Uh, he said that when he was like 16. Um, you know, and of course, God had other plans. Um, so uh, it is very, very interesting. You know, just uh, in the last week, I just wrote on my Facebook uh, page to d- this morning, just recounting some of the Q and A's we've had and some of the conversations. You know, one person commented that he thought, and this guy was probably a very, uh, you know, uh, in the tribe, devout believer. He said it was uh, t- too much reluctance and not enough convert. Uh, that was his comment. Another person uh, stood up in the Q and A and was was like in a in a state of of uh, uh, st- stunned, and he said, "I was shocked by what I experienced." <laughs> and, That's awesome. Uh, yeah, and then uh, somebody else uh, commented, uh, "What did what did they?" Uh, um, oh, somebody asked me if. Uh, uh, after seeing the whole piece, and I could tell this person was a believer, said, uh, do I think an atheist could experience what Lewis experienced? Uh, that's a great question. It very. is a great question because they, it was like Lewis takes you to a very amazing sort of weight of glory, heavenly place in the play. And and it, and you, you're, you're drawn to it. You want it. And so the person said, well, I don't want, you know, I, I want what Lewis has, but I don't want to, I don't want to follow Christ to get there. So I'm wondering if I can get there uh, with no faith. And of course, that's, you know, it's almost a contradiction in terms. And then the other, just yesterday, I had a person who waited for me after the show and just peppered me with all kinds of why God questions. <laughs> I love that. I love and hearing then, that. And then she, uh, uh, and then she went on to, you know, to, you know, to in the process telling me why she couldn't be a Christian. And I could tell that she was really struggling. And I and I said to her, you know, in, not in so many words, but uh, the, the effect was, you know, I think that God has you in his net and I, I don't think he's going to let you go. And she looked at me with a kind of a sense, like a little surprise, a little sense of resignation and asked me, what should I do? And I said, well, I would. Uh, I suggest you read John's Gospel, and uh, um, I could uh, kind of tell. Like she said, oh, "Do I really have to do that?" You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, it's been. It's been a really glorious experience. That's awesome. Um, I think one of the things, from my point of view, is well, even just a friend of mine who saw, uh, who's seen the show already uh, in New York. Um, so he's such a big fan of C.S. Lewis, and this experience seeing live theater on stage um, was a little bit, he characterizes, it was kind of like seeing an awesome, superb cover band 
playing your favorite hits, <laughs> right? And for the first time, you're seeing some of the you know the band playing, reciting the number of your favorite passages from Lewis's works originally, but live in person, and it just brought everything full circle for him. So I think that's the type of experience I think that um, you're able to afford. Um, inquiring minds, people are struggling with the question, and the people that actually are familiar with Lewis and want to go for the ride, right? I think that's just the genius of the live theater experience uh, for wow, the people. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to borrow that metaphor. I think that's a terrific Oh, metaphor. yeah. It reminded me of one time I went to a, a club when I was in college, and they were playing this this band was covering Steely Dan, and I thought it was Steely Dan. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I love the fact that, right, so after theater, this is a little bit departure from norms, is that you have a Q&A that is yeah. accessible for everybody. And um, from my understanding, even I'm sure this season, the percentage of t how, what percentage of people actually stay for I the Q&A? Uh, I would say two thirds to three quarters yeah. stay. Uh, it's, re you know, it's, uh, I think that, that people are, you know, uh, the, the theory about theater and any art that's, that's really trying to, uh, to capture an idea or a message is you first have to engage the imagination. And because if you don't really do that, it really doesn't matter what else you do. Uh, once you engage the imagination, and people begin to ask the question, could this be true? Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, that, then you get to a place because, you know, uh, Romans 1 says we all have the knowledge of God that we suppress. And so what, what happens with theater is, you know, unlike going to a church service where it's pretty, uh, it's personally pretty rationally based and, and you know, uh, pretty prescriptive in many ways, um, that, ten, you know, when you go to church, you're sort of saying, okay, I got to have my guard up if you're not a believer, right? And when you go into a theater, you go in like you go see a film, you just sit back and you you let the story come to you. And and there's this, you, you this the resistance goes down. And so when that happens, all of a sudden people say, well, I, I want to know more. And then the Q&A uh, allows for the kind of front brain rational part to kick in. Uh, oh, we should have more conversations about how yeah, the yeah. arts and we'll theology and faith. You, uh, when you see the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, so what is, so as we close out this interview, what is next for FPA for Max? Well, we've, we've been so busy, you know, we, we, we produced uh, the screw tape letters in London. Yes. Um, and uh, we, uh, we just did a brand new play, Martin Luther on trial. That was, very, very, uh, uh, really, really interesting, um, and, and capture a lot of people's imagination about Martin Luther. And of course, it's being the 500th anniversary. Um, and, and then this piece, uh, and the Luther piece and, and, and most reluctant convert are brand new pieces. So, uh, you know, it's taken a while to develop them. Uh, obviously being the 2017, we want to tour Martin Luther all, all over the country and, and we're setting that up. Uh, and I think that we want to run Most Reluctant Convert in New York as long as we can and then begin to tour it. So I, I think that's immediate. Uh, we, we do have plans. We, you know, we've been having a season of plays every year and we're developing our third season uh, now that will uh, we'll begin in the fall of 2017. Uh, I think we'll be doing uh, a, uh, the first New York production since uh, first New York revival of uh, Shadowlands, uh, oh, wow. the film between uh, uh, about C.S. Lewis and his uh, late in life wife, Joy Davidman. Joy, uh, so we want to do that play in the fall. Wow, uh, sounds amazing. So um, if people wanted to get in touch with you or FPA, learn more about the show, uh, buy tickets, Where? what's the best place that you can point yeah, them to? Yeah, I think the best way, we go to our website, cslewisonstage.com, cslewisonstage.com. Uh, that has all the particulars. Um, and, yeah, so that would be great. And, and, and you're at the also, A Acorn Theater right now until? Acorn Theater, 42nd and 9th. Until uh, very, when? Very close to uh, Port Authority. Yes. Right Hell's, yeah, Hell's Kitchen. And you're running the show right now all the way through April, correct? Uh, well, at least through the first week of April. Uh, but we, uh, 
it's uh, the audiences are building and if they continue to do so we would like to extend but right now we're selling tickets to the to the first week of april nice well thank you so much i know you're really busy um really appreciate you taking the time of your time today to just drop on by and share with us the c.s lewis journey and story that you have with fpa um i'm looking forward to seeing you in person in the next couple of weeks uh, bringing my kids my high schooler um good because it's uh right it's an 80 minute show no intermission it's uh, something that the, the my kids are going to appreciate i think i'm really excited I, so to introduce we've, we've had a very uh we've had a really broad uh demographic in terms of age and actually in terms of of uh uh, racial mix too so I've been really pleased yeah and um, uh, some of the dads in my small group have started to take some audiobooks of C.S. Lewis and listen to it in the car with our kids and it's actually prompting a lot of questions and I right to culminate that experience of coming to the show and watching this live I think it's just been fantastic so um, really appreciate the time that you've had with us today thanks Kenny thanks for having me we'll catch you here next time at KennyJang.com <laughs>